A new piece of legislation will soon receive royal assent and create new criminal offences, some of which may only properly be described as thought crimes and curtailing religious freedom. In this video, I'm talking to you about the Public Order Bill. Stay tuned. So the Public Order Bill is the government's response to disruptive protests over the last few years, notably with Extinction Rebellion and Just Stop Oil. Taking you to one of the government policy documents setting out some of the key facts. Disruptive protests become increasingly common in recent years. For example, as you will remember, just recently, last year, Just Stop Oil cost the police £5.9 million over just a short few months, causing disruption and protests. Uh, between September and November, the police made almost a thousand arrests relating to Insulate Britain. Police forces have spent in excess of £4 million managing these protests. So there's clearly a need to do something about uh, protests and how they are permitted and what should be criminalised and what the police should be able to do about that. However, this went a little bit further than that. If I take you to the bit that everybody's talking about in the bill, I will take you to part 10. This is offences of interference with access to or provision of abortion services. This provides, and I'll explain it afterwards, it is an offence for a person who is within a safe access zone to do an act with the intent of or reckless as to whether it has the effect of influencing a person's decision to access, provide or facilitate the provision of abortion services, obstructing or impeding any person accessing, providing or facilitating the provision of abortion services, or causing harassment, alarm or distress to any person in connection with a decision to access the same. A safe access zone means an area which is within a boundary which is 150 metres from any part of an abortion clinic or any access point to any building or site that contains an abortion clinic. And there's a few exceptions here being inside a dwelling. But moving back to why this is such an issue and why this has been reported as being such an issue, because there was an attempt to remove silent prayer from this clause uh, and so not criminalizing silent prayer. You'll remember that a lady was arrested uh, just weeks after being acquitted of the same offense by uh, silent prayer outside or nearby one of these areas and yet uh, MPs have voted against the uh, exclusion of silent prayer from this legislation. So in other words, an amendment that would have permitted silent prayer and consensual conversations within this censorship zone has failed to pass a vote. So your government has voted against free thought and religious prayer and consensual conversations if it is within these zones. Quite rightly, this has been described as a watershed moment for fundamental rights and freedoms in our country. Uh, this is by legal counsel by, uh, for ADF. Uh, Parliament had an opportunity to reject the criminalisation of free thought, which is an absolute right, and embrace individual liberty for all. Instead, Parliament chose to endorse censorship and criminalise peaceful activities such as silent prayer and consensual conversation. Today, and here's the key point for me, because this is where what we call creep... Um, can erode your freedoms. Uh, after all, we live in a freedom-based society. You are free to do anything unless there is a law that curtails it, rather than a rights-based system. We do have certain rights, but ultimately it's a freedom-based system. So here's the next point. The key point for me is this paragraph here. Today it's abortion. Tomorrow it could be another contested matter of political debate. The principle remains that the government should never be able to punish anyone for prayer, let alone silent prayer and peaceful and consensual conversation. Thankfully, um, where the clause initially called for a prison sentence for those convicted of engaging these peaceful protests near abortion uh, facilities, the penalty has now been reduced to a fine, albeit it's still a criminal offence. 
to have hold silent prayer within one of these areas. Nevertheless, it's extremely regrettable that Parliament, which exists to protect and champion the rights of the electorate, has taken a clear stance against fundamental freedoms, opening the door for nationwide thought crime prosecution. So let's think about that for a moment. Today, it's abortion, um, this article says, and tomorrow it could be another matter of contested political debate. Now, you don't need to stand on one side or another. For example, I can give you arguments for and against this as a lawyer. There are always arguments for and against. So let's look at an argument, first of all, that is against the silent prayer in one of these areas. If you've been through a traumatic experience and you require the facilities of an abortion clinic, it's fair to say that you might feel intimidated, harassed or alarmed or distressed if there were, let's say, a group of people engaging in silent prayer within one of these zones and to walk past them would be intimidating, fearful and humiliating uh, or any manner of uh, combination of different feelings. Therefore, it may only be right in those circumstances to argue that that sort of activity uh, should be restricted from those areas so that if you do need to access those services, you can do so without the fear of uh, intimidation, alarm, distress and all of the emotional stress that comes with it. The counter argument is silent prayer is ultimately thought. It is merely a person's personal private thoughts. Whether they are standing within a vicinity or not, they are just thoughts and a prosecution for such things would require the same level of standard and burden of proof of any other prosecution, which is that beyond a reasonable doubt. But not only that, it would be criminalizing what a person is thinking and also criminalizing their prayer based on any kind of religious freedom that they have once enjoyed. But ultimately, the obvious problem is, as highlighted in this article, is that today it's this issue which you may very well take a stance with and agree with, or you may not, but tomorrow it might be something else. Maybe there's something tomorrow related to disability or gender identity or anything else that the legislation seeks to create some form of thought crime about, in which case any of those things might amount to a thought crime if you are thinking one thing or another. Or moreover, if you were expressing those thoughts online. If you were to express a thought online that were to conflict with either this legislation or any legislation that follows this pattern and this progression of the law, then we may well see a whole host of different criminalizations of different thoughts and different actions. And ultimately, that is what has happened with this vote. MPs have voted against an amendment that silent prayer and consensual conversations should be permitted within those zones. Now, of course, I'm not here to tell you whether your view is right or wrong. You may be on one side of the fence or the other with this bill and uh, with this law and ultimately the law which is going to uh, criminalise any of these things within this area. And so it is a very broadly drafted section within this bill making it making it an offence uh, for any person within a safe access zone to do an act, any act, with the intent of or being reckless as to whether it has the effect of uh, any kind of harassment, alarm, distress, which in itself is, is arguably wholly subjective. Uh, there is an objective element uh, to alarm and distress and harassment, but there is also a subjective element as well. Um, if one person feels that they are alarmed or distressed or caused any sort of harassment at all, bearing in mind an interesting legal point here that harassment, um, as set out in the Protection from Harassment Act, is a course of conduct, which of course requires uh, more than one occasion, so on at least two occasions, 
Um, but here there's no reference to being more than one occasion. Just any act with the intent or recklessness as to whether it has this effect. So in a free vote by MPs, um, they've rejected uh, this motion to protect silent prayer in a public place. And so ultimately, there is a very real danger that many more uh, criminal offences will be introduced in the coming years about what you think about certain things. And if it starts with thought crime and prayer based crime, uh, doubtless there will be many more criminal offences attached to what you say in public, what you uh, say online, which of course is fundamentally in many respects going against your right to the freedom of expression afforded by Article 10 of ECHR. Um, but of course it is not a absolute right, it is a qualified right uh, which can be interfered with if it is uh, legitimately necessary and proportionate. In this case, as I say, some of you may agree that um, these areas should be restricted uh, from any form of harassment and intimidation, even if that includes silent prayer, and some of you may disagree with that. As always, I would ask that your comments in the box below are considerate, um, and bearing in mind that in the future, some of those may be criminalized. So with that, uh, please do remember to like this video and subscribe. Leave me your thoughts. I welcome them in the comments box below. And as always, thank you for watching.